Hello EDF fans, today we're going to have a little bit of fun with data wrangling in Azure Data Factory. So data wrangling is a process that you typically undertake as a data engineer to understand your data a little bit better and to prep it for other processing or use in modeling and analytics. Now this is a slight change to the way that data wrangling was surfaced in Data Factory previously as it was known as wrangling data flows. So in the end, the technology being used is still going to be Power Query for the user interface and the mashup editor. And when you operationalize your, uh, your wrangling as a pipeline activity, that's still going to execute on the back end as a data flow using Spark. So you're going to be able to scale out your Power Queries and execute them at scale using Spark using the same M language and mashup editor that you use for Power Query already. So that's all very powerful, but what we've done is we've refreshed the preview for data wrangling and data factory, and we've categorized it under the tool that is actually being used. So you'll now see a factory resource in data factory called Power Query, which means you'll also be able to go directly to the menu here and say new Power Query. So when you start your data wrangling, this is where you're going to start. So let's make a new Power Query. I'm going to call this my, uh, we'll call it my loans and data wrangling. All right, so I can use my data factory data sets. Uh, we do not have all available data set types yet for data wrangling Power Query. Data factory will take care of the marshalling of the data factory data sets to Power Query data sets for you. So you don't need to make specialized data sets or use specialized data sets to work with data for your data wrangling in Power Query. I can just pick from my list of already the existing data sets I have within my data factory. So you can see Parquet here. I have text limited. I have uh, SQL DW uh, pools, and I also have some Azure SQL databases. For this demo, I'm going to use my loans CSV text limited file that I've already defined completely in my data set with the data factory. I can just reuse it now here in my Power Query for this data wrangling exercise. Now you don't have to sync the data into a data set. So you can just use the Power Query for data exploration if you like. I'm going to do that just for now, just to demonstrate that for you. And I'll come back in and I'll add a sync data set then so we can then take the uh, data prep that we're doing and use it as transformation to land the data into, in this case, I'll go into uh, probably use uh, Azure Data Lake um, storage, or I could maybe we'll do some uh, database work there as well. But as you add your Power Queries into a pipeline, that gives you the, the ability now to automatically scale it out as is and to be able to land that data into the different data set types that are available to you through Data Factory. So because I'm in the, the phase of my work now as uh, an ETLer where I need to understand my data, I'm doing some data exploration, I've turned on data profiling so I can see the summary stats of my columns. And I do that here through the home menu uh, within the Power Query Mashup Editor. And I went to Options and glo Global Options. And I'm using the top 1,000 rows. My data set is about 900,000 rows in it. So I didn't want to sample the entire thing. I'm just using the 1,000 rows. You can also sample the entire data set. I have detect column types on uh, for unstructured sources. I also have all of the column profile stats uh, turned on up here, the global options. OK, so that's how I'm able to get this. Now let's take one of these columns. If we can see that the term column is a string, a text column, and it has two different values in it. So it's um, a 36 months and 60 months. This is the, and you can see the distribution of those values in that column for the term. And what I want to do downstream in my pipeline is I want to work with this data already cleaned up. But the 60 month, let's assume the 60 month value is an invalid value. It's something that maybe we don't offer that type anymore. So I only want the 36 months. So I can use the interface just as I do in Power Query or Excel or those other sort of tools. Um, when I use uh, Power Query uh, the same way here in Data Factory. So I'm going to remove the 60 month option, just filter it. So now I'm going to set a filter here, filtered rows in my steps. So I'm going to then show you how the, these equate to a data flow within Data Factory, which has also data prep capabilities and exploration in it. And these steps essentially are, um, you know, simply vertical here in the Power Query interface. And if I were building this as a graph in data flow, it would be left to right horizontal instead. So these steps essentially equate to um, transmission blocks if I were building in data flow. Think about the difference in data prep and data factory as Power Query being your logic first, your spreadsheet style interface to look at the sampling of the data and then figure out what you want to do with that data after you've, you've seen a sample of it. And then in, in data flow, you're really working with logic first. You're building a graph and then you can sample your data and look at some of the results that way. Okay, great. And so now I have 
also the data types that I needed because I had detect data type turned on. So I'm, I'm in good shape now with my data. But let's do one more thing to be um, proper cased. But I see that my downstream systems like these categorical columns and caps like I have here for home ownership. But I forgot to do that for these two fields. These are proper cased. So let's go ahead and let's turn these both into um, fully caps. So I'm going to take just those two columns and I'm going to right click and we'll say transform columns, text transforms. I'm going to make those all uppercase. Okay, so now that it's applied to my Power Query, and I can see here in the mashup editor, everything looks just fine to me. I'm, I'm working with the data interactively. I'm on the Power Query online service, and I feel like I understand the data well enough, and I have also prepped the data well enough for the rest of my pipeline. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the settings up here on the Power Query. I'm going to add a sync data set so that I can now execute this at scale against any size of file command, running on Spark without changing anything. Add a data set, and let's land this data. I'm going to click on Add, and let's go ahead and let's put this into a SQL database table. So I have a data set for my SQL table loans. Let's go ahead and we'll just um, we'll just recreate the table here on the fly. I can have error handling settings. I can have pre and post processing SQL scripts, just like you can in data flows and data factory already today. All right, that's it. My prep is ready. Let's go ahead and save this as my loans data wrangler. Let's go over into a pipeline. I'm going to go ahead and make a new pipeline. All right, so let's call this pipeline as pipeline. That seems like a pretty good name for this. I'm going to drag in that loan state of wrangling. Now, this is where you would get, you know, as complex with the pipeline logic, down, logic as you like to. We could have, you know, some data ingestion before this happens, landing that maybe in ADLS Gen 2. Then do some prep on that. Then run some more complex data flow after maybe you're um, performing some slow change in dimension work. On that and after here, maybe you have multiple dimension tables you have to work with, as well as some fact tables, so you might have multiple data flows afterwards, and then so on and so forth. For this demonstration, let's just run just the Power Query, my data wrangling right here. Okay, loan state wrangling, that's fine for the name. Now, on the settings is where you're going to have the sort of settings you'd have for data flows, because we're going to translate this into a data flow on the fly for you. So what I'm going to do is to leave these settings as they are, but I would recommend that you use an Azure integration runtime that has two things. One, it has enough horsepower, so you, you apply enough number of cores or general purpose memory optimized onto your integration runtime, and that you also set the core count high enough. Now for my demo, this is going to be fine around eight cores, but I actually have a larger um, pipeline, a, a larger integration runtime already ready to run my debug pipeline. So I'm just going to use the debug button up here to execute this on my existing debug cluster. This is all from the data flow infrastructure within Data Factory. And it's now going to execute there at scale. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run in the background. Uh, we do not yet have interactive monitoring enabled for data wrangling, but when it's finished, you will be able to see the full execution plan as a data flow, as you do today. All right, what I would do want to do is I want to show you the analogy of data flow as a data prep and data exploration, how these things match up together really nicely. So let's go ahead and do a new data flow. Now, the new data flow menu is going to take you right to data flow. You're not going to have the selector of mapping or wrangling anymore because there is no longer the concept of a wrangling data flow. It's all data wrangling. Let's call this data flow as wrangling data flow. I have some great ideas for some awesome names tonight. Oops, and I messed it up. Data flow. Very good. Okay, now the way that, that those steps would work here in, in Dataflow, let's go ahead and look at the steps again in the Power Query. Source, filter, change column types, and uppercase. All right, so here's how that would look. Source. Source is this loan, so because this is all within Data Factory, I can use the exact same data set across all these different capabilities. The next thing I did was to filter. So let's go ahead and put a filter on here. If I remember correctly, the filter was that we were looking at just the 36 month value within the term column. All right, so the way that that equates here, and, and let me also do this. So since we are uh, demonstrating the differences and the similarities, uh, how you would data prep and explore with the two different capabilities in, in Data Factory, to view the data and sample it, I would go back to the source and click on data preview here to look at that data and click refresh on that. Now the the settings are also up here in debug settings, just like in Power Query, it's under settings and then the limit is set to 1000. That's the default. You can increase the limit here with any um, ad hoc number that you want to put in. 
here. And if you want to sample the entire data set like you can in Power Query, just put this to a very, very high number and you'll get all the rows uh, coming in on that. So here we are looking at the 1000 rows sample in the way that you would see the same sort of um, exploration of your data in the profile stats is to click on the statistics button to get a column level statistics summary stats for your data here in data flows. You see the similar sort of stats of no nulls, the length of the columns, and the distribution of the data across those. So we're going to get rid of these 60 months is our way to filter. So what we will do is we'll filter on the column name of term. We're going to say, now I notice there were some spaces in there. So what I'll do is I'm going to actually inline do a trim on here. And maybe, by the way, when we looked at that, that might have been a good way to also do data prep is to clean that up in the Power Query, take out the spaces in the value right there in, in the um, Power Query. But I can do it here too. I can just trim that term column and say if it equals to uh, 36 months, that's all we want. We don't want the 60 month value. We can click refresh here to do the same thing you would get in Power Query to get that perspective down here at the bottom of the sampling of the data. All right, so this is actually checking your, this is really testing your, your logic here within the expression and saying that yes, I'm getting matched on 36 months and I'm not getting matched on 60 months. So that's gonna mimic how we do the data prep in Power Query. And then back on the Power Query, uh, what we also had was the column types and the uppercase. And what I'll do is I'll show you a couple of these samples here in the data flow. Now the way to get the, um, the auto detect of the data types very similar. So the projection uh, is all string because it is text limited out of the box. You just click here, you say detect data type, and you'll get that same uh, result from your data flow as you would in Power Query. So you can see how when you're doing data prep, it's a natural uh, way to translate from M into data flow script and then execute it at scale. Now you don't need to build this logic if you want to work through data first in the spreadsheet Power Query environment will do all this for you. Uh, last thing I'll show you is that to do those other sort of transformations, you would use a derived column. Derived column is going to be your, your primary transformation to use for transforming columns or adding columns. So we did some, some data type changes. I, I took something like, uh, you know, you can take like loan amount and you can cast that in here. And so what you would do is go into the expression builder and you type in. So this is, you know, a different aspect or a different context or perspective, if you will, than Power Query, but giving you uh, similar results. So I would say something like, you know, two decimal on here and the column that we're working with is loan amount, say say loan amount. And uh, with the IntelliSense, you will get also the IntelliSense around your incoming columns. But then I can say that I want that to be whatever precision that I want to be for that decimal value. Uh, and then the other one we had was we also had another thing that we were doing, which was um, we were taking a string column and we were making it all uppercase. And so you would just take one of your strings, uh, let's say we were doing home ownership, and we can make that to upper like this, okay? So we do all this translation for you, but these are the two different ways that you can get to the same scaled out data transformation within Data Factory. Let's go back to the pipeline. Let's see how we're doing with our Power Query that completed. So it did all that work that we sampled. It did it against uh, 900,000 rows. We can look at the details. You'll get the execution plan just like you do from data flows. We can see that um, we started with 887,000, but after we filtered out the um, uh, that column value for the term from the Power Query, we ended up with 621,000. Uh, we can also see how the data flow ended up being built. So did a bunch of different selects to do the um, data type changes for us in the filter. So it's really, it actually ended up to be a very similar um, uh, flow as I was building manually before. And then you end up syncing that data into SQL database. We got about a partition per core or so. We had 64 cores of worker nodes. That makes sense. This ran on Spark. And you can see how long each stage took. This entire stage ran in 45 seconds. Most of the time was spent was writing that data into the sync factory. So that was a look at data wrangling within Data Factory. Thanks for watching.